I'm so sweaty and so hot. This is the fourth time I'm filming this video. If something goes wrong this time around, I might just kill myself. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. If you clicked on this video, you're probably looking for short book recommendations that are perfect to crush your reading goals with, or if you're looking for a nice palette cleanser in between two big books, or if you're just in the mood for something quick, I have a couple of books that are I think around 200 pages that are perfect to finish in a few hours or in an afternoon. So without further ado, because I want to keep this video as short as the book I'm, books I'm going to recommend, let's get into it. The first book I wanted to talk about is Carmilla by Sheridan Le Fanu. This is a vampiric gothic novella that is also supposedly the inspiration for Bram Stoker's Dracula, but in my opinion this one is way better because it has sapphic vampires who does not like gay vampires. We follow our main character Laura who alongside her ailing father lives in this massive estate because every single vampire book is obviously set at a massive mansion. One day Camilla and her mother pass through town. Camilla's mother basically pleads with Laura's father and her as well to please take care of Carmilla because she has to attend very urgent business and she cannot take Carmilla along but it is very important so please, could you take care of Carmilla? Being the good-natured people that they are, they let Carmilla stay with them. And from then on out, a lot of weird things start to happen both at the town, but also at the manor that they are living at. Laura becomes completely ensnared and captivated by this woman, by Carmilla, and they have this... I wouldn't say romance, it's more like a toxic relationship. This one is lots of fun, especially if you're like into the very classic gothic vampires. I would highly recommend Camilla. In my opinion, it's better than Dracula and it is also quite short, so you can definitely finish this in a few hours. Next up, I wanted to talk about I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel. This is essentially the book for the girlies that are a fan of Obsessed by Olivia Rodrigo, or if you're looking for a book that is similar in vibe as the TV show You, but in this case Jo is a woman, we follow this unnamed character, this unnamed woman, who is having an affair with a married man. And when I tell you that this man is the biggest walking red flag you'll ever come across, because our main character is not only obsessed by this man's wife, no, she specifically is stalking one of his other lovers. Yeah, so this guy is a walking trash bag. This woman that our main character is essentially like high key stalking is a very popular social media influencer. Basically, she's able to stalk her 24 seven, both in real life, like she follows this woman around, but she also just watches this woman on social media nonstop. Lots of interesting themes, like for example, how to deal with a fun boy. <laughs> Seriously, like the toxic relationshipness of it all. Um, but also obsession and also privilege because the person that our main character is stalking is also wealthier than her so she not only compares herself physically and wonders why this red flag of a man is interested in her but also economically because she's able to afford way nicer things than she is. I also really think you would enjoy this if you're a Gen Z or a millennial because the language in this is very reminiscent of TikTok language. The chapters are very short and they're kind of like in a bulletin sized format so they're very bite-sized. The titles that accompany the chapters are like the math ain't mathing or I saw the red flags and I thought they were sexy like it's very millennial and Gen Z coded. I'm quite thankful that this book is not longer than it is because if I were to listen to this main character talk about this waste of space <laughs> of a man longer than the amount of pages that we get, I would probably strangle her. This is about as much <laughs> fun boy I can handle. Great book, highly recommend. I could not do this video without mentioning The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This is most definitely my favorite classic of all time probably. Also it's quite short so you can finish this I would say like in an hour or three. If you've been living on the rock and have no clue what The Great Gatsby is about, this is set in the Roaring Twenties in New York and we follow kind of our observer character, main character called Nick Carraway who moves into the city but soon realizes that his next door neighbor is super, super rich. He has a massive mansion and every single night he throws the most exuberant, extravagant parties. Now this man is Gatsby, Jay Gatsby or the Great Gatsby. At some point Gatsby asks of Nick if he could introduce him to his cousin Daisy Buchanan and Daisy is one of his long lost loves. Now she's kind of 
involved with someone so he's been trying to lure her attention to get her attention by throwing these out of proportion parties in the hopes that she will at some point attend them nick kind of reluctantly says yes and the second gatsby and daisy are reunite things kind of go downhill from there. I personally really love The Great Gatsby because you can keep rereading it and finding new things that you've never noticed before. It obviously deals with themes of love, but also ambition and the elusive pursuit of the American dream because this might be a spoiler, but Gatsby acquired his wealth in not the most legal manner. Very much recommend it if you're looking for like a nice classic to start off your classic journey with. It catapults here in the roaring 20s so yes next up i wanted to talk about heaven by miko kawakami i do want to give a trigger warning for this book because this one deals with very explicit bullying so if that is something you don't want to read do skip on this one i wouldn't say that i enjoyed reading this because like i said it is quite a cruel portrayal of bullying but I found it also kind of heartwarming because the two main characters in this book bond over the fact that they're both outsiders and they're both being picked on for something that they cannot really change. This follows two 14 year olds at high school and the boy in the story has a lazy eye and gets picked out because of that. And the girl in the story doesn't really practice standard hygiene for a very specific reason that I'm not gonna spoil, but due to their shared pain and hardship, they find each other and their relationship grows into a beautiful friendship that, yeah, despite it being really unsettling, I thought this was a beautiful story of friendship and coming together in hard times. So that is heaven. Next up, I wanted to recommend Woman Eating by Claire Coda. This is a book that I discovered through a clockwork I wanted to say clockwork orange, a clockwork reader on YouTube. And she described this book as girl dinner, but if the main character was a vampire, and I generally don't think I can describe this book any better way, we follow this girl called Lydia, who's biracial, both in a sense of like, she's half human and half vampire, but I think she's also half Asian. She's coming to terms with the fact that she's living on her own for the very first time because her mother recently passed away and she's struggling with the fact that one, she has to navigate life on her own for the very first time, but two, she considers being a vampire monstrous and especially the idea of drinking blood, like consuming people to be able to survive. To her is just demonic, it is monstrous, she does not want to do that. She even at some point tries to eat human food, but it just makes her incredibly nauseous and it just doesn't work out for her. Aside from that, she's also an aspiring painter and works at an art gallery to be able to kind of like climb the the artistic ladder in that sense in my opinion this book is such a clever metaphor for how we as women always struggle with our bodies like i think it is a shared female experience that we will always demonize food in some way or at least i always kind of demonize food i think especially growing up we've been taught that you should not be eating that or make sure you count your calories because you know you don't want to gain any weight. like that particular aspect is kind of ingrained in a lot of women's experiences and the way that this book kind of uses drinking blood as a metaphor for how women tend to demonize food is just such an interesting take on it that being said though i do want to give again a trigger warning for this book because essentially we are talking about a vampire with an eating disorder so if that is something again you that you do not want to read do skip out on this one but this is probably one of my favorite reads of last year i would definitely recommend this book if you're looking for kind of like a literary novel with a fantasy spin to it woman eating is definitely something that you should check out lastly i wanted to end on a positive note with horror by grady hendrix i would describe this book as ikea but to make it haunted like if you were to take ikea and combined it with Five Nights at Freddy, you would have this book. I would describe this as a satire horror book. It is mostly funny. It was not scary to me at all. So this book takes you to Orsk, which is basically like the knockoff IKEA equivalent in this story. We follow a couple of employees who are working the night shift at one of the IKEA stores. And during their night shift, slowly but surely, a lot of weird, supernatural things start to occur. As any horror book, it kind of goes downhill from there. Essentially, this is a satire that critiques 
critiques bureaucracy and how third culture can in the end just make you make very dumb decisions. All of the employees in this book are trying to follow the rules and follow the IKEA handbook, but in the end that doesn't really resolve anything and it makes them just do really stupid things. I thought I would throw in this book because I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. It's quite short, it's very funny, and especially if you're like an IKEA fan, I'm sure you can have tons of tons of laughs with this one. So I got you covered and have fun. So those were my short book recommendations. If you have any books that you would like to recommend that are like around 200 pages, please leave them in the comments. I always love reading short books. They're great as sort of like a palate cleanser in between big books because I don't always want to be reading 400 pages. Sometimes I'm just like, okay, let me read something short and move on. I'm basically overheating at this point, so I'm going to wrap this up and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye!